Hello, in this video, I'm looking at a free plugin on the WordPress repository called OMGF, which makes it really easy to host Google Fonts locally. This is our follow on from my last video where I was posing the question, should we self host our Google Fonts? Of course, there's no clear answer to this. It's going to depend on your own circumstances. But I'm going to link to this document where I sum up the pros and the cons. Often I will want to self host, not necessarily for speed, but it will give me control how my fonts display which Google CDN won't but there are some real arguments for Google CDN because it's a good CDN it's very performant and they're always improving things they're reducing the size of the files that they are loading and we're getting into some really interesting stuff which I'll mention in this video called variable fonts so it's not always easy to know which one is going to be best for you and I think this is where this plugin could be really handy if you just want to do a very quick test just to install this run it and if you don't like the results you're getting you can just uninstall it and go back to how you were in my next video I'm going to show you how I go about doing this manually and loading them but I think this is really useful the other reason for doing a video on this particular plugin is that it's had a major update this year most of the videos I've seen on it are now out of date I believe, although I wasn't using this plugin before, that the update was a little bit controversial because they moved to having a pro version. And I think some of the features that was in the free version have moved to the pro version. But before we get out our pitchforks and say this is a terrible bait and switch, I think we have to realize that this is a solo author who needed to rebuild this plugin. I believe this is the only plugin that is still updated that's out there that does this job. So I have no problem with the fact that they needed to monetize and change this. They need to get something back for providing the support. And what is in the free version is pretty much all that most people need. So no issue with that. I'll talk about the pro in a moment. But first, what I want to show you is just how easy it is to use. So I've set up a site here using my page builder, which is Beaver Builder. I've also got WP Rocket in this. And I'm using two different fonts here for my headings. I'm using Work Sans and another one called Allegria. I think this is the serif font I'm using for my body text. And it's also got some bold on that as well here let me quickly show you a performance test now the results here are largely down to what uh, WP Rocket's doing because it actually is improving the loading of Google CDN through your theme with it but this is what I've got I'm using speed vitals here because it allows me to keep the results and show you the waterfall but it's pretty much the same as Google page speed insights in the fact that it's using Google's Lighthouse, its hosted version of that. If we set it to the standard mobile, it's the same as Google PageSpeed Insights in that it's simulating a 3G connection. So it's slowing things down times four. So what we get here is a score of 99. I'm less worried about that. I'm more concerned about this one, which is more variable, the largest contentful paint, which is the time it takes to load the largest element in the viewport. And in the case of a standard mobile, we need that to be at 2.5 or under so we're 1.8 that's good and if we want to be passing it on core web vitals that's all about the field data so 75 percent of our users need to get that 2.5 or under speed so it's pretty good let's just take a look at the waterfall so we can see that my theme is loading google cdn so we've got their style sheet that is coming in here or added at the end is display swap which is added by WP Rocket in this case it's not standard there WP Rocket's doing a couple of other improvements it is pre-connecting to the fonts and it's also combining two requests to Google into one let's take a look at the bottom where we've got the fonts so we can see here fonts.gstatic.com and we've got our two fonts here but note there are just the two of these and a fairly large size on these but they are variable fonts which means that should I want to go crazy with my design and have lots of different weights on that I don't need to keep adding in new fonts Google's just going to serve this up the same so I can do a lot more with the same speed on this so this is one of the benefits of Google CDN it keeps adding and improving the things that it's loading to us here so I just wanted to point that out okay let's go back to my test site I'll just quickly show you the customizer just to show you that I've got work sans has been set 
for my headings and I've also got for my body text I'm using Allegra and it's set in other places on the theme and this is the important thing to know about this plugin is that on the free version it will pick up on the call that your theme is making to Google to know what to do if you have added fonts in on individual pages say using a page builder the free version only the pro version is going to pick up on that one so you can't do this on the free most of the time that's not going to be the case you're going to be setting things over here but i think it's important to know also worth mentioning as well is that you can't once you've loaded things in you can't turn off that call on the free version so with some of the themes you can just decide that you're going to turn off google fonts altogether or you can use a script so it's not going to be called if you do that then you break the plugin at least the free version of that i think also you would restrict how the pro version can be used as well okay let's go to the back end of the site just to show you that under plugins we just need to do a search for omgf and it's here i've activated it already and what i like about this plugin is that it buries itself nicely under settings here i really hate it when those plugins that do one thing usually just when you're building put themselves in the main menu this one doesn't so i like that now this looks a little bit overwhelming there's a lot of text here there's some tabs here but all you actually need to do is to go right down to the bottom here and click on this button and then it's going to go and see what your theme is calling out to and it's going to get on with the job of then loading those fonts into your install and i can just quickly show you this here so with my ftp what it does by default is it puts it into the uploads and it puts them here and as you can see here it's got support for really old browsers. It's all the different file types that you might need. I wouldn't be loading those myself as it is. And you could, on the pro version, you can decide which ones you want, but it's there. So there's nothing to lose from that. Okay, we could go with what we've got now. It's working, but I'm gonna do one more job, which we can do here. I'm gonna leave out preloading. There's an explanation of what that is. I talked about it in my last video. What I'm gonna do here is just one more thing to remove the normal or the 400 weight for my headings so i'm not going to load that so it doesn't load on my waterfall and what we'll do is we'll do another speed test with this to see if there's any change on it and i expect that it will be now it's telling me i need to clear my cache which i will indeed do and i'm also going to need to spend a little bit more time just to preload hopefully we will preload my home page so it's a fair measure with what I did earlier okay let's go back so let's just remind ourselves so we've got 1.8 here it's worth looking at the size as well so we've got 306.6 and 99 let's run this again and hopefully we will see an improvement I have been every time I've done the test but these things are quite variable and what we'll expect to see is those three fonts that I've let load will be showing in the waterfall and what we should see is that the Google style sheet will have disappeared and it's been replaced still by another file by their own so there we are we've seen improvement scores gone up to 100 this has shaved off half a second that's been what I've generally been getting and in fact the file size has gone down because of those variable fonts were heavier and we're not using so many in this case we've actually gained a, a little bit there we've also gained tiny bit more as well for the style sheet change so let's just whoops let's just go and take a look at that and da, 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 let's go down there there's the new style sheet so it just picks out what we what it needs it's carrying less information than the google ones is and there are our three fonts which at the moment are a little bit less in size than what we're loading through google cdm but again that would soon start to stack up if we use lots of different weights so i've only got it down to these three here okay so that's pretty much that so let's go and take a look at the back end and just look over some of these settings so i won't go into detail about this but um what happens is with google cdn if i wasn't using wp rocket i wouldn't get that swap and page speed insights will warn against invisible text because of the way that their particular browser and it's the same with firefox works in the sense that it doesn't try to if the it leaves it blank to load your 
font so you get invisible fonts and then when it finds it, it loads it and if it doesn't then it swaps to a system font what I did on my last video is I wanted to preload which I could easily do here and then I moved it to block so I didn't get a swap over I got straight into the fonts and should they fail then it would go into swap by setting it to block so all the things that I really need are in this as long as I'm keeping to my theme and I just want these basic things all the stuff I need is there. I would need to go to the automatic if I'm using a page builder and I've got other pages there. And if I wanted to control what I'm having and force some of the subsets here for languages, but this is just not anything I do. What we've also got in the free version, which I like is we can set that on so it can remove all of our fonts that is uploaded when we delete that we can also decide to put it in a different place where we want those fonts I showed you where they were in the uploads so we can have that in a different place so all I need is pretty much here it is called different to how I might do it manually I've got some other options and these are in the pro version let's just go over to their page here so something which may be a major concern you need to look into it because I've not quite understand it it says that it increases the GDPR compliance now I don't know if this is because the free version still needs to try and make that call to Google whether it's completed and that is a violation with some in the EU I think Germany is particularly strict about what you can do there and whether you would need the pro version to do that I'm not entirely sure but the other benefits to the pro version is something which I don't tend to do and that is I, I can have a fallback font I don't know where this is it's in here somewhere and you just generally get a lot more control over there we are the fallback font uh, is something I generally just let the system one goes in there but you might need to do that and you would need the pro version of that of course if you wanted to pick up on other fonts and constantly keep watching out for those new fonts then you would need to go to the pro version so there are some benefits here and also you can get rid of their style sheet which is loading by combining it into your own style sheet with the pro version so let's just have a look at the pricing over here why this doesn't necessarily appeal to me I love the plugin and I love how easy they've made it and it tempts me to try and do it this way because doing it myself manually is more difficult but the pricing slightly uh, puts me off because I'm somebody who gets close to the 100 websites. I'm generally not keen on these pricing, so I'd like to have seen this with some unlimited, so I don't really need to worry about having to double up the cost over this one. It's in euros here. I'd, I would need to pay VAT for myself on there. So, you know, nearly 250 euros is, is quite a lot, as particularly if I felt I needed to buy two of these. But, of course, there are the individual licenses. I'm not sure if they got the pricing right on that. The only reason why I probably, at the moment, wouldn't consider getting into the pro and I have listed out and I'll be linking to this some of the the main features on this is because of this variable fonts option that I've got with being able to locally load the stuff that I've just shown you with Google I can decide whether I'm going to install that rather than what the pro version of this is I think it's really exciting I'll just show you this website quickly because I did the the font that Google CDN sent me i've uploaded to this site which this version is in beta at the moment this wakamefondue.com don't know how you'd ever remember that for fonts but i uploaded the the font that google gave me and it shows me it's a variable one and you can see here it's pretty cool because in that one file you can kind of change all of the weights here and it does allow you to do some other clever stuff with some um, CSS and some JavaScript with this so I think this is the future I think for me to be persuaded to go to a pro version of OMGF I think it would need to start giving you some options to be able to load those new variable fonts but this is very new stuff so maybe that is something that the author might consider for the future with this one anyway I hope this was useful I hope that kind of covers stuff I have also let me just quickly before I sign off just note here that I have put some test results earlier I did this is pretty much what you just saw me do that's the original with google cdn and then that's the one without preloading when i preloaded that's what happens you tend to lose a little bit in terms of speed 
but it allows you much more control over the experience for the visitor. What I would generally do, or I've started to think about now, is that I would think if you've got a lot of fonts and lots of different weights, I would be loading only the ones that are likely to be showing on the viewport on the initial load and give the others time to load. Otherwise, if you have too many fonts loading on the top, then you're probably going to slow down your largest contentful paint. Okay, I think I've probably talked enough. Thank you. If you got to the end of this, please give me a thumbs up if you did like this video and I hope to see you again. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.